So at Cyber Rodeo last week, Elon kind of dropped a little bit of a nugget when he said he wouldn't want to spill all of the beans. But his point was basically that they were working on a dedicated robo-taxi vehicle. And a lot of people took that as new information that they hadn't mentioned before. But if you scroll back to Battery Day, previous earnings calls, AI Day, Autonomy Day, they had mentioned many times in the past that they wanted to build vehicles specifically to use as robo-taxis and nothing else. And Elon did mention at the presentation that it would look weird, it would look different and was kind of alluding to the idea that it would be Cybertruck-like and that it goes all in on its intended purpose but does not abide by, like, traditional car design. Which, of course, gets me excited. I want to know exactly what Tesla has in mind. You know, if you don't have a driver necessary in a vehicle, how can you design the interior to be more optimized for seating? Do you even need a display at that point anymore? Probably not. If your goal is to accelerate production and build it as quickly as possible, probably means a lot of single piece castings. Maybe that 12,000 ton gigapress patent Tesla has is actually intended to be used on some kind of robo taxi vehicle that has people facing each other or outward or I don't know, some kind of different approach to vehicle design for sure. But it had a lot of people wondering, is Tesla still planning on opting in regular vehicles that, you know, everyday people have bought and put full self-driving into? Can we still opt those into the robo taxi network? Tesla definitely would have a lot of backtracking to do if they came forward with the robo taxi plan after autonomous driving had gotten much much safer than a human and they were ready to roll it out to the masses because they were kind of telling people that hey you should buy full self driving now that way you can opt it into the robo taxi network and eventually that'll make you thirty thousand dollars a year I'm kind of shocked there hasn't been class action lawsuits yet but uh, if they started saying technically no you can't opt in your vehicle to the robo taxi network even if you paid the twelve thousand dollars for full self driving there would be a lot of upset people for sure, but I can kind of understand why Tesla may want to be careful about just opting anybody in because the important thing to keep in mind with Tesla's current vehicles, they are not steer by wire, which essentially means that the steering wheel in all Teslas built today is hardwired connected to the steering of the physical wheels, which means that basically if you did pay for full self-driving and opt your vehicle into the RoboTaxi network, even though you could penalize people for it and you could highly discourage it, someone could technically, you know, hop into your car and they're not supposed to touch the wheel or pedals, but they feel like messing with your car or they feel like trolling. So they grab the steering wheel and they wiggle it around or make it do a turn that it's not supposed to do or make it hit something it's not supposed to hit. And don't get me wrong, I've seen the interior cameras of Teslas and it's clearly not that high resolution of a camera. Someone could easily start messing around with the interior and cause problems. And then there's going to be these tremendously huge liabilities of what goes down when a robo taxi gets abused or someone hits the brake pedal on the freeway or at a turn or something bad whereas in a robo taxi you'd have a lot more control over all of the vehicle's actions because there wouldn't be a steering wheel or pedals to worry about in fact i believe there wouldn't even really be a display it would just be a small compact space for people to sit down and if you want entertainment and you want to check the news or watch a movie or play a game or something tesla's just gonna say eh, use your phone we don't need to provide a screen for the passengers to do that. It's just gonna add to complexity in manufacturing. So if that's the case, then literally no one in the car will be capable of trolling with the steering wheel or slamming the brake pedal without the car knowing, which yes, the brake pedal is hardwired in to the brakes on Tesla's vehicles. So it may be a tad more complicated to opt your Model S, 3, X, or Y into the robo taxi network without perhaps some additional hardware. Like Waymo robo taxis have like a plexiglass barrier from the front row. So you sit in the back of the van and then you don't have access to the front you can't mess around with anything up there which is kind of smart but at the same time not quite as easy as tesla may have made it out to be like hey when robo taxis are out you can just flip a switch and your car will go out and drive people if tesla wants to protect themselves liability wise which they usually do you may have to install you know the plexiglass barrier and then lock the two front doors of a robo taxi which means that the number of people you could take on a model 3 or model s drive might be substantially less than people realized because there's only going to be two to three seats available which will probably be fine for most people needing taxi services but it would certainly not be enough to replace cars for families or people with children especially people who have car seats and that kind of thing which is again why I'd like to emphasize that even if robo taxis do come out and I do want to emphasize the if here it would not kill off the purpose of people owning their own vehicles yes if you're just trying to transport someone from point A 
to point B. The robo taxi, especially charged via solar, is going to be the cheapest possible way to do that. And Tesla will make a healthy profit margin on those rides. But the best selling vehicles in the United States are pickup trucks and SUVs, which neither of those vehicles are selling well because they're the most cost effective way of transportation. It's because people use vehicles for a little bit more than just transportation. People buy trucks and SUVs because they have more storage space, because they have more seating options, and especially with younger families, being able to strap in car seats for their kids is going to be a lot easier to do with your own vehicle, or if you want to go camping or pack some surfboards somewhere or move some firewood or tow a trailer across town, a pickup truck is just going to be so much better at that, especially if it's yours and you have the trailer and the tow hitch and all of the customizations you want on that particular truck or SUV the way you like it. That's always just going to be infinitely more practical than trying to momentarily rent somebody's Model 3 that drives up and you have to bring all of your own accessories and customize it the exact way you need to. So I don't see robo taxis killing off the need for car ownership. However, similar to Tesla's demand problem right now, which is that there's way too many people ordering the car. That's why prices are so high and wait times are so long. In the event that Tesla is able to solve level four, level five autonomy, it's just going to make far much more sense for them to start switching over assembly lines to mass producing robo taxis at scale because the profitability of those vehicles, if they don't have to worry about pedals, steering wheels, driver displays, side view mirrors, and all of those complexities that go into a Tesla just so that a human can drive it, those can all be eliminated. And then once they're on the road driving people around, they can undercut the price of an Uber or Lyft or, you know, a regular taxi cab by far. And because they probably don't want to overwhelm the robo taxi network, they'll likely price it pretty high. So like cheaper than an Uber, but not like as cheap as it possibly could go. And if those vehicles are being used every day, all the time for years and years, and basically will last as long as the powertrain and the battery does, which Tesla said at battery day, the robo taxi would use lithium iron phosphate. So very, very high cycle life. Tesla could make $30,000 a year off of each of those vehicles, which is infinitely more profitable than selling those vehicles to customers. And that is what I wanted to address mostly when people are like, would Tesla sell, you know, the dedicated robo taxi to everyday people? There honestly wouldn't be much of an advantage to doing it. I mean, sure, it would be nice for us if Tesla found this cash cow of a product that could make that much money a year and to say, hey, we're going to let you buy it up front and then you can make money through this network. But knowing Tesla, I think they would rather just keep the vehicles for themselves. And maybe some vehicles that bought full self-driving will be opted into the robo taxi network, but I just personally don't envision it being as simple as Tesla makes it out to be. They'll probably make you install certain hardware that prevents you from trolling the car as it's within its drive because that's going to cause too many liability issues. Plus, who's going to make sure your car stays charged if it's driving people around all day? Who's going to keep it clean when a mess is left behind? There's all kinds of little issues and complexities I can imagine with trying to turn pre-existing Teslas into robo taxis, whereas a dedicated vehicle gets to bypass a lot of those problems. Who makes sure it gets charged? Who takes care of the mess? Well, it'll be Tesla. They're either going to have dedicated staff at superchargers waiting around just so they can plug in the robo taxi, or they're going to have Tesla bots ready by that point and they can clean the inside of the cars and do whatever Tesla needs to do to maintain these vehicles. Like what happens when the robo taxi gets a flat tire? Tesla is going to be liable for all of that. Whereas if an owner of a Model S, X, 3, or Y decides to opt into the robo taxi network, who's liable if that car gets a flat on the road? Who's liable if that car gets in an accident because someone was messing around with the car, gets in an accident, and then, you know, flees the scene? Eh, it gets a bit more messy liability wise there. So I'm curious to see what this type of vehicle would look like. And I'm sure it would be very innovative and different. They're probably imagining all kinds of different things that we're not even picturing. Like maybe you don't need big fancy windshields with robo taxis because people aren't looking at the road anyway. So they may have all kinds of wacky design attempts with this robo taxi. So I'd love to hear your guys' ideas down below. But just for the record, I'm not in the camp of believing full self-driving will be solved anytime soon. I think the Tesla bot and the dedicated robo taxi are likely getting a little bit too ahead of things based on how FSD beta is performing right now and the fact that it still has a lot of work to be done and the fact that while Tesla has had a lot of improvement on autonomy, they've basically had zero improvement on liability. They have not wanted to assume more responsibility for their vehicles. In fact, it's gotten worse by requiring people to, you know, keep their hands on the wheel and now they even have eye tracking in the cars because using the hand wasn't enough anymore. Once we start seeing Tesla go in the opposite direction and start saying like, okay, now you can use autopilot and stop paying attention 
attention. Only when those types of circumstances arise will I think we're getting closer. But until then, I just think it's a really fun pipe dream. Thank you to everyone supporting the channel over on Patreon, as well as just watching these videos. All of you are helping me so much, and I appreciate it. Take care. Have a good day.